In the spring of 2015, in the Colombian city of Barranquilla, a recently turned 18-year-old boy named Luis Fernando Diaz found himself amongst 3,000 hopefuls attending an open trial event organized by FC Atletico Junior, one of three top-level Colombian teams on the Caribbean coast. For Diaz, this was likely his one and only chance. By the age of 18, many players are already receiving senior team training, with some even having debuted and secured professional contracts. He didn't look like much at a glance, which is why he hadn't attracted attention before, said Octavio Rivera, Atletico Junior's director of youth football at the time. It happens with a lot of young players in Colombia. They don't have the conditions they need to develop adequately because of poor nutrition and a lack of financial support, Rivera added in a recent Sky Sports interview. However, Diaz soon dispelled these initial impressions with his ball control, swift dribbling, and abrupt changes of pace. His performance was so striking that it caught the attention of one of the scouts at the trials, who immediately alerted his colleagues. There were players of different ages and skill levels, but Diaz possessed qualities that set him apart from everyone else, says Rivera. He was very thin, but he had abnormal levels of stamina and energy for a kid of his age, and he shone above all the others because of his dribbling ability his feints, his speed and his character. He excelled in all of those areas. For Luis Diaz, all he needed was that one ray of light, that one chance to show his abilities. On that day, he grabbed the opportunity with both hands. He was enrolled in FC Atletico Junior's youth setup. Fast forward to April 24, 2022, Anfield, the Merseyside derby. Trent Alexander-Arnold sees Luis Diaz in a perfect position and swiftly switches play across the field. Diaz jumps up and controls the ball flawlessly with the instep of his right foot, on his landing immediately accelerates past defender Seamus Coleman in a move called the Rabona Control. This sends the Anfield crowd into a frenzy. For many, it was the first time they had witnessed such a piece of skill. With this, Luis Diaz made a resounding statement. He has arrived at Anfield. The journey of Luis Diaz has not been easy, he has beaten all odds to arrive to where he is today, playing for Liverpool and wearing the number 7 shirt. In this video we will delve into the story and journey of Luis Diaz, from Barrancas to Liverpool. Luis Diaz was born on January 13, 1997, in the town of Barrancas, La Guajira, on the northeast tip of Colombia, neighbouring Venezuela. Barrancas is located at the doorstep of Cerrojón, the largest open-pit coal mine in Latin America. In these regions, there is not the support in place, Diaz said in an interview to New York Times, before the 2022 Champions League final. There are a lot of good players there but it is hard for people to leave, to take that step and follow their dream. 
They can't leave for reasons of money, or for family reasons, and that means that we are losing a lot of players with a lot of talent. Luis Diaz belongs to the Wayu ethnicity, an indigenous group with its unique language and cultural heritage. When asked if there are any other contemporary footballers from the Wayu group, Diaz responded, not at the moment anyway, not ones who are professional. His father, Luis Manuel, had been a gifted amateur player in Barrancas, the family's hometown. By the time Diaz was a child, his father was running a local amateur soccer school and in a position to give his son the benefits of a more structured training than he had received. One characteristic that is very important with Lucho is humility, says Rivera, director of youth football at Atletico Junior. He didn't have the economic support he needed, but he was very dedicated and very professional in all respects. If you ask me what's behind his success, I would say his humility, his resilience, and his ability to overcome difficulties without complaining or asking for anything from anyone. The principles imparted to Diaz by his parents and grandparents ultimately set the stage for his initial entry into structured football. Despite the fact that he was now part of the youth setup, travelling six hours to and from Barranquilla for training, Diaz's future in football remained uncertain. He was still a long way from securing a professional contract. However, one pivotal tournament changed Diaz's trajectory, the 2015 Indigenous Copa Americana. This was the inaugural, and so far, the only edition of this tournament, which comprised eight indigenous national teams from South America. Each nation fielded a team made up of players from their indigenous communities. Diaz qualified to play due to his Wayu heritage, and represented his nation in the tournament. The competition took place for the first time in Chile, from July 16th to July 25th, 2015. The national football icon and one of Colombia's greatest players, Valderrama, was in Chile acting as a technical director for the tournament. Luis Diaz told New York Times, that he saw me play and liked me is a beautiful thing, he said. I didn't know him at all, but I admired him a lot. He's a reference point for all of Colombian football. It was a huge source of pride that Pibe Valderrama might choose me for a team. Valderrama was sufficiently impressed by Luis Diaz's performance in the tournament that he singled him out for praise during a press interview. Though for Valderrama, it was just a simple comment about a player who had stood out during the matches. Those words coming from a national football icon carried a lot of weight to Diaz himself and to the club's hierarchy also. This was the break that Luis Diaz desperately needed. In March 2016, Oscar Rivera confronted the club's hierarchy. At this point, Luis Diaz still didn't have a professional contract. Rivera and his colleagues asked the president of the club to give him one as a matter of urgency, because we knew he was underweight, and he needed greater support with everything. The request was approved. He was then sent to affiliated club Barranquilla FC, in Colombia's second division. We didn't think he was ready to play for Junior's first team, says Rivera. We felt we still needed to build him up and give him a longer process of development, and that's when the option of Barranquilla FC appeared. As a professional player at Barranquilla, Diaz lived with his teammates in housing provided by the club, and he was granted access to improved resources. This included dietary supplements aimed at helping him gain weight, along with more targeted coaching. He went from 50 to 58 kilograms, which was a step from not having anything to having something, and when players develop physically in that way, they can lose certain qualities. Fortunately, the coaching staff at Barranquilla, spearheaded by head coach Arturo Reyes, recognised Diaz's potential. They were careful not to overburden him, keeping in mind that he was still physically catching up to his peers. The club had devised a sporting project for him, says Rivera. They were very clear that he had elite qualities, but they also knew it was a process which required patience. So, even though he didn't play particularly well at first, nobody ever doubted him. They never pushed him or rushed him, and that was very important in his development. With structured coaching, a comprehensive sports diet tailored to fully develop his body, and Diaz's own humility, hard work and talent, his progress as a player was now swift. By the summer of 2017, he was selected to represent the Colombian under-20 national team, a huge step up from the indigenous team he played for two years prior. When he came for the first time, 
The first thing we saw was that he was a very humble boy, said Paniagua Colombia, under 20 assistant coach. He had a lot of financial needs, and he was determined to make the most of the opportunity we had given him in order to help his family. He was always thinking about his family. We saw that he was a very shy and quiet boy, but on the pitch he showed what we had seen in him at Barranquilla. He had an immense desire to develop as a player, says Paniagua. He had great respect for authority, he was a polite boy who knew how to listen, and he was always thinking about how he could improve and how he could overcome the obstacles put in front of him in order to help his family. At the age of 20 in 2017, Diaz was elevated to FC Junior's first team, the top division of Colombian football. He continued to develop and excel daily. In 2018, Diaz played a pivotal role in Junior's triumph in Colombia's Primera A Championship. At the age of 21, he was a main player in a title-winning team. His team also reached the Copa Sudamericana final, a tournament akin to the Europa League. This breakout year also earned him his first senior cap for the national team, as he played in a friendly match against Argentina in New Jersey. Diaz was emerging as a star. His outstanding performances were garnering attention from the Argentinian heavyweight team, River Plate. However, after representing Colombia in the 2019 Copa America in Brazil, he finalised a €7 million Euros transfer to FC Porto, where he established himself and went on to win two further league titles. This laid the foundation for his subsequent transfer to Liverpool. The individuals who supported him on his journey in Colombia now watch him with pride as he delivers outstanding performances on a global platform, a testament to how far he has come. This was the story of Luis Diaz, the boy from Barrancas, La Guajira, and his ascent to the top level of world football. Thank you very much for watching this video. I have included the sources I use for my research in the video description. Please feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons or leave a comment. Thanks again, see you next time, and enjoy your day. Uh -huh.